Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. You said one. One, one for, the, for the camera, but we're good. All right. <laughs> I would like to share with you some uh, ideas I have about what is it to be an artist, what, to, what is it to have an artistic vision, and what does it mean, actually, to be creative? What is the source of creativity? What are the fears that stop people from thinking that they are creative? So maybe I'll need, since the public is here, I will need your help. We'll be interacting. Um, raise your hands those who think they are artists or they might be creative at some point. Ah, some people in here. Well, what I would like you to explain, first of all, is that there is a huge misconception about what creativity is. You saw not everyone felt creative at this moment. Where does it come from? What are the mechanisms of creativity? And what are the misconceptions? Well, on one side, people would think that being creative refers to people who are born genius. Vivaldi, Picasso, and so on. On the other side, People think that creativity applies to people who at the end of their very long life have gained an incredible wisdom, thus being able to explain other things to other people. And also there is another point of view, is that people who tend to think that creativity applies to people who are originals, some eccentrics, people who are of different skin color, or just different religions. What happened to me when I was a kid? I was born into a Jewish family in Moscow. And in that time, in the 80s, for some reason, anti-Semitism was very present. The kids didn't know that. So usually, when we were playing games, they would say like, mm, the Jewish, we will put him there, over there. He will be the last one to speak. Or, you cannot play with us. So I was just like playing with myself. Going to Belgium, where I lived after that, something similar happened to me. Instead of being the little curious Jew, I was the little curious Russian. <laughs> so I remember we had this classroom with wooden walls. And on the top of those walls, we had those transparent windows. And so I remember the kids from other classes, they were like, oh, look at that, there is the Russian, there is the Russian. It was a kind of a strange feeling. Because when you are different, original or whatever, you're often put apart, especially when you're a kid. Now, what is interesting is to see what pushes people to have that kind of behavior. So, the misconception comes actually from the times where we are kids. At the very first stage, we are framed in this way. We have a family that has beliefs. We have uh, a grandmother who doesn't want us to go away. Everybody saw maybe Coco the movie. We are framed. Our parents want us to be something. On the other side, education sometimes fails to unlock our creativity. It fails sometimes to pay attention to the very singularities of every single individual, the kid, adolescent, etc. And even sometimes, school kills the artist inside us. Now, I would like to interact with the public again. Remember those, and raise your hands, those who remember they have been drawing recently. Do I see everyone? Oh, very few people. Okay, now, I would like you to remember, raise your hands those who have been drawing when they were kids. You see? This is my belief. Everybody is born creative. Those mechanisms I just explained tend sometimes, little by little, to kill the artist in us. I have a very good example. Einstein was allegedly known for being dyslexic. He had difficulty, difficulties to focus at class. But once he left the general education 
towards an education that was paying more attention to specific disabilities or specific talents. He was able to finally unlock what was inside him and to become what we know right now. So what is interesting now is to figure out what are the sources of creativity? What makes us different, actually, from most of the animal species? In my opinion, everybody is born artists. Everybody is born with a capacity of imagination. Every one of us has the power of being the god and the designer of their own life and destiny. And this is the biggest difference between us, human species, and most of the all other species. We are capable of projecting ourselves into potential futures. We are capable of building scenarios. And this is, for me, an analytical way of, uh, let's say, nurturing creativity. But then there is a very personal level, intuition. I'm going to ask you, now I see you again, I would like to ask you another question. Think what you had for lunch today, right? Now try to remember what you had for lunch yesterday. And raise your hands, those who had different meal. You see, for me, this is the very manifestation of creativity. We are capable of making choices. We have free will and freedom of choice. And again, this is what is the biggest difference between the animal world and the humans. We are capable of seeing things from various perspectives. We are capable of imagining scenarios out of a present situation. We are even capable of finding solutions to unexisting problems. Consumer society, remember madmen, marketing, advertising. And this is one of the parts of creativity. Now, what are the keys to unlock creativity in us? For me and for many other people, the biggest challenge and the key world in that, on that path is intention. We don't have to be afraid of looking for our call, what we are good in, what drives us, and with passion and pleasure and perseverance, going ahead, learning a skill, being the best at what we want to be. We don't have to be scared of obstacles or um, mistakes on our path. That is serendipity. A good example of uh, intention is me. Obviously, I'm a little nervous right now on stage. But what drives me, what is my intention, is to deliver you an idea that is worth spreading. Now, another type of intention. Raise your hands, those who have a driving license. Yeah, that's good. I didn't ask those who know how to drive. Huh? So, but remember, when we started to learn how to maneuver a car, there are these difficulties. Me, what I had is um, when I got my driving license, I wanted to desperately take out this beautiful girl I was in love with. And I didn't have a car. So I went to my neighbor and I borrowed his beautiful red Beetle, old style Volkswagen. And proudly I was already projecting myself into the, uh, into the date. But reaching the gate, I forgot about my intention to drive through. So obviously, I scratched the car. What I wanted to say, the intention, if we focus on what we, on the, on the objective when we want to get, it is much easier to persevere and fight. So let's not be scared of that. Don't wait for the exterior constraint or certain urge. This is to say, you are working for an international company that is willing to expand, let's say, to South America, and the boss invites you to his uh, 
office and says, uh, look, we're going to expand, but unless you learn Spanish, you will not be able to stay with us. So don't wait for the constraint. Learn things beforehand, before the urge comes. Another example, a little bit more sad one. Somebody goes to the doctor and learns that he has only six months to live because of a cancer. People then start doing bucket lists. They would go to a country they would like to visit, they would learn a musical instrument, or they would start learning how to paint. Don't wait for that moment. What I do as an art advisor, what is my interest through aesthetics, is to unlock people's creativity, to fuel them with imagination, and to bring them new ideas. This serendipity and the source of creativity, let me use uh, this metaphor. Imagine this beautiful forest with, with trees and with fruits of luck, knowledge, etc. Do not wait for the fruits to fall down. Take your ladder and climb on it, because otherwise somebody would steal those fruits. Now, what is the source of creativity and how to expand it? Well, there are millions of ways. Me, what I did several years ago, after reading and reading again on my Facebook page that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and all those clever guys advocating read one book per week, and at the end of the year, you would have read 50 of those, and after 10 years, 500. I wouldn't tell you I've read <laughs> 50 books <laughs> per year, but in three years' time, I've read about 100 at least. That was my serendipity, research to new knowledges. But what you can do, and we can do all as individuals, we can go to professional fairs, like art fairs. We can go to road shows, we can go to theater, we can go to movies, we can discover other countries, we can learn a language. And let me reveal you a secret. It takes only one year to gain a new skill. You can learn a musical instrument, you can learn a new language, you can take cooking classes and become very good at cooking. The possibilities are limitless. What is important is that, no, I'm sorry, what, the example I wanted to give you, when I was at university in Belgium, I moved to Spain for a year to learn. And what I did learn, not only I succeeded my exams way better than in Belgium because I was in a more stimulating environment, but I've learned a new language. I've learned a new culture. I've learned about new habits, new geography, new landscapes. And also, I've met other children. I've met other students from Germany, from Italy, from England. And you know what? This was my first con contact with Mexicans. 20 years ago, I've met three Mexican guys who gave me the desire to learn Spanish and to come here, and maybe that's serendipity brought me here on stage at the end. Little by little, our learning skills and our passion and perseverance lead us inevitably to a profession. We become the best at what we are doing, and our profession gives us the desire to profess, to share our knowledge. So comparing the education, what I was to talking about, general education that aims to make all kids, as grown-up adults, very similar to each other, in order to have a homogeneous society and work together, well, I think this is a very big mistake because we've, we lack of symbiosis at that moment. When everybody is exploiting their originality and creativity in their own way, we can be useful one to each other. You can be useful to me, I can be useful to a third person. And this is how we can build on. 
And I can tell you, chances are that success will come on your path in whatever form you imagine it. You can gain, you can gain celebrity. You can have financial success. You can become a Nobel Prize nominee, or you can win a gold medal. Perseverance. So what I would like to end up with is repeating and repeating again. I think that everybody is born creative. Everybody can nurture creativity in order to be a happier person. And this is on personal level. We can have a more fulfilling and self-accomplished life. We can gain richness and motivation. And on societal level, we can create better products, better services. We can create more profitable businesses and we can build on a more harmonious relationship with our environment. And we can build on values to progress as a civilization. So now let me ask you again, who by now thinks in here that they might be artist or creative? Well, a little shy, but there is a huge change. Now what I would like you to do, ask yourselves, each one of you, the question, what kind of creativity lays in here, in you? What would be your greatest calling? And when you go home, ask yourselves what kind of artists you would like to be. Thank you.